Welcome to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Today we're doing a Raw recap. It's going to be kind of quick. Um, whoa, what's that? I hate when things pop up on my computer. Never. My name is Hobo Tom. And unfortunately my girlfriend in some ritzy hotel. Whoa! See that black and white ball of fuzz run? Darn, she can run. My girlfriend's off doing a photography job, living it up in some townhouse with Swedish Mishores. I just came back from hoboing and from watching Monday Night Raw. And uh, this, is, this was an okay show. I, I think I'm just having my wrestling hangover. The backlash was so bad last night. And looking at other YouTube comments, I'm not alone in that thought. Oh, well, let's get, let's, let's get, get to Raw. I'll try and post this as quick as I can, because I think it's just the two videos. So, we start off with a good promo. Ron comes in the ring. Hey, no one's as good as me. You're going to be the monster in the bank. Kurt Adam comes up and says, you are, oh, you are deserving of it. Again, this kind of look of fear that Kurt Angle gets when he stares at Braun. So again, it's kind of good. Kevin Owens then came out, ran him down. He's like, no, 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 wait a second. You got everything wrong. It was illegal and, and all this other nonsense with him not being the legal man in the ring. And Braun just kind of looks upset. And it's a starting match. And also, this is the qualifier for the Money in the Bank. And they're really going to prolong this because Money in the Bank, I think, is like six weeks away. Like a month and a half. And it's just the beginning of the month. I want to say Money in the Bank is the seven. Oh, wow, it would be. It's always good to have a calendar around. Paper calendars are good. Don't use your cell phone. Dopes. And this led to the qualifying match between Kevin Owens and Paul Strowman. Again, for the monster in the bank. Shot. Braun won. Um, Kevin Owens had some good spots. I mean, he one, one he's a great talker. Just running down both Kurt Angle and Braun whenever he could. Just talking constantly throughout the night. And again, showing kind of the, the heel tactics that you would ex you'd expect anyone facing Braun to use. Trying to get a count-out victory versus doing it the harder with a pinfall. Hey, can't blame him. I'd probably run the other way. And I would take the count-out loss. And give up all my moves. I would just say, no, no. Oh, please don't hurt me. And just run. But again, it was, it, was, it was a fun match. This was a cheeseburger match. One day I'm going to have graphics. Again, right now we're in hobo production facilities. One day there will be little icons going across the screen. Cheeseburgers. I'll put up my guacamole salsa burger. Ooh, a can of soup. Tomorrow is soup night. Kevin Owens, no soup for you. <laughs> and it was a fun match. Braun held his own. He would just, when Kevin Owens was outside the ring, he would just run him over. And the crowd loves it. The crowd seemed kind of dead for some reason. They tried to take over some parts. Again, it was, it, and I'll get into this later, it just seemed long. There, you had a triple threat match. All I know is Ember Moon. I think I making dinner bathroom or something. Just now, eh, it was, it was probably okay. Ember Moon wants up in the women's money in the bank. And this year, it's going to be eight men versus eight women. Or eight, eight men and eight women. Yeah, in her Jenner, Money in the Bank would be vegan. Two briefcases up there. They just wrestle at the same time. Ooh. I should get money if they use that idea. But again, you have the eight men, Money in the Bank, and the separate eight women, Money in the Bank. They're having the qualifying matches. I want to say it's going to be four from Raw, four from SmackDown. 
So yeah, it, it should be interesting to see. I'm not really going to stretch this out for a while. Next, again, we had the women's match, the women three-way. <laughs> woman three-way. Glad my girlfriend's not here. But I'm Moon one, so she has her spot in the Money of the Bank. That should be interesting. Um, I think the next match I saw was Ginger versus Chad Gable. This was a ham sandwich. It's just a rematch from last week. I mean, Jonathan Coachman was being goofy. I didn't understand half his comments. I think someone had, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it looked like an Alberto Del Rio head in the background. One of those big giant heads. I don't know. Just looked odd. I, first, I thought it was King Ross, but in a second, looking like, wait, that looks like Alberto Del Rio, Alberto Alfred. I don't know. You never know. Sometimes with these crowds, they do have funny signs. So again, you have Gender versus Chad, Gender Mahal versus Chad Gable, and it was a good contrast in styles. Chad Gable has to learn that the moon salt is no longer a finishing move, though. And I don't know why. And you have a kind of difference in styles. You have just a brawler in Mahal, as a mat technician, and Chad Gale. And it, was, it, was fun. it was a hammer sandwich match. Again, the Singh just gets involved so that someone can beat him up. So, so, so someone can look strong besides Ginger. And Ginger came in and just started to beat up Chad Gable. <laughs> they got to an Alexa Bliss promo. <laughs> All you hear in the background. Asshole. Asshole. And again, Alexa Bliss is blah, 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 calls out Nia Jax, calling her a bully. Whatever. The, the Ascension, I guess they're trying to lobby. Blah. Then we have Zack Ryder. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Long Island Zone Zack Ryder. Talking with Kurt Angle in the back. So this is just kind of fun. And Ginger's there and trying to get Kurt Angle to say, oh, I deserve the money in the bank. Look what I just did to Chad Gable. And we'll see this come into play later. Like, <laughs> Zack Ryder went to fist bump Kurt. And, 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 Kirk's, and Kurt Angle's like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ugh, there we go. There we go. It's like he didn't know what to do. Just like, um, Enzo Amore. Cringe when I say that name now. Was talking with Kurt Angle when, when he was still on the show. It was just funny. This led to a Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler versus Slater and a Rhino, Rhino kind of semi squash match. Uh, again, another hand. I'm not trying to build up Drew McIntyre. Having Slater, although it was, it, was, it was kind of neat though. He Slater so said, "Welcome back to the band." Part of the because I think Drew McIntyre early before he left was part of the four man band, so that was just kind of funny. It was what it was. It has some moments. Just, just really a him. Drew Galloway just has a vicious looking headbutt. And they went, they, they, we got a lot of good double team, team with Ziggler, McIntyre. It was, it was okay. It was a ham sandwich. Not, nothing really exciting. I don't know. Ever, think, ever since Backlash, it's been kind of down. And this show just came to be really long, just a drag. And the, and the ads killed things. At least SmackDown does the show and show thing. So um, it makes it a little bit more bearable. But this is just tough. Then <laughs> it's just funny to hear Cole and Graves' different opinions on Elias. Graves just runs him down and enjoys doing it. Cole just builds him up and enjoys doing that. Then Elias comes in, runs down everyone, shows up, cheers, his pops. <laughs> this is where the crowd started tried to take over by, by just chanting Rusev Day. <laughs> and I think he almost broke out laughing. He said, there will be no Rusev Day today, and if you keep on chanting that, I'm going to leave. 
And to that, everyone said, yay, yes, 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 yes. Again, Coach Man is just speaking nonsense about the whole thing. I don't understand that. No Coach Man next week. Back to Booker T. But it'll be a little bit better. Uh, but you know, whatever. This led to a Rude versus Elias match. Again, I was shocked. This was actually just a ham sandwich. Um, it wasn't a really great technical match. It was just a lot of brawling. And I can understand that from Rude's perspective when he was trying to get back at Elias for kind of smashing his neck or his larynx against the unprotected ring post. It was okay. I mean, it could have been better. Probably when they had scans of the crowd, they just, they just seemed bored. But yeah, this was fun. Oh, then Elias also runs down the fact that the Islanders don't deserve to be back. And the crowd just really threw them. And it was what it was. Then we had a mojo. We had, we had we, Seth Rollins promo. He issued the Intercontinental Open Challenge. Mojo Rally showed up. He got booed. And of course, he beat up Zack Ryder. And eh, it was an okay match. I mean, they started to chant, We want Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. We want Ryder. Woo, woo, woo. Again, Mojo Rally's not going to pick the IC belt. Not happening. Even though it did look like he had his moments. And again, Seth to Seth, it was, a, it was an okay match. Again, it's really not a ham sandwich. It does seem long. And why Mojo Rally? If you're going to get a pop, at least have Zack Ryder show up. Hey, have Mojo Rally interfere then. That'll give you a really good pop. But hey, they don't pay me for anything. I'm just a fan. Smart. Most of the time. So again, this kind of is what it was. Mojo seems to be going backwards. I know for a long time he was in the tag team title picture. Zack Ryder, he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal tag team with Gronk, I think, for a match, or Gronk interfered. He seemed like he had the world. Mojo also, I should not speak about this, but it looked like he got chubby a little bit. And Mojo lost, lost some of the two hype. Well, he's not hype. Mojo's not hype anymore. He's starting to get too hype with a ref. Ref is counting to twos, and he's like, three, 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 go! Three, 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 go! It's like, dude, don't get hype in front of the ref. Again, it's, it's my only fear for Seth Rosen. He's a great wrestler. I just hope he doesn't develop that four fears, the four moves of death. It's a falcon arrow to pin to ripcord knee to super kick to curb stomp. And the whole crowd was chanting curb stomp, curb stomp. Again, they just tried to hijack it a little bit. Then you had, I don't even know why they had this. It was just that. Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel versus The Woken! Yeah! Matt Hardy and the mass and the, and the Master of Woken World. I think that's what they call it. Bray Wyatt. This is just like a grilled ham, 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 ham and cheese sandwich. I mean, I don't know what purpose it served. It did mention, I think Coachman even said, no, was it Coachman or Cole said that um, <laughs> Bray Wyatt's not showing Bo Dallas any brotherly love in the Sealer Brothers' life. So, and just a lot of back and forth Graves. Graves was funny. Cole's good. Coachman's just, I don't know, he's just babbling. Um, again, just really, I hate to give it a ham sandwich because uh, Matt Hardy is just entertaining, and they did have a double team sister Abigail finisher. It was kind of neat. 
it's different. I, I do like it when I, you know what? I'm going to bump it up to a cheeseburger. I'm going to bump it to a cheeseburger, but I'm going to call it a hamburger instead because it was better than a ham sandwich, not quite a cheeseburger. It was, it was missing something. It's missing the cheese. So it was a hamburger. Uh, you can't screw it up, especially with those two and all their charisma. Matt has charisma. I think Bray Wyatt's enjoying his role a little bit more. It was okay. This led to the triple threat match. And when I saw what time this started, I'm like, my God, they're going to give this match 15 minutes. That's going to be a lull, Roman. Thankfully, I was wrong. It was the triple threat for another spot. It was Finn Balor versus Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn. Wow, Roman Reigns just got booed. Finn Balor had a different leather jacket on, too. He has a huge pop all the time. Sami Zayn, he's just charismatic. He, there, there's, he, 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 has, he has that it factor that Roman Reigns doesn't have and probably never will have. Roman Reigns just shows up to booed. They're shoving Roman Reigns up. Rains down everyone's throat. After Finn Balor and Sami Zayn got announced, Sami Zayn made it to the ring. The crowd realizes, like, ooh. And Sami Zayn's like, they're like, they're not booing me. The da da. Boo. Da da. Da da da. Boo. It was a good match. It was a triple threat, no DQ. This was like the, the cheeseburger match. And most of it was because for the first part, Roman Reigns just threw Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn out of the ring. Like, like he was nothing. Like he had no business being there. Which which I could somewhat appreciate. And it gives him a little character. Hey, it makes him almost cool looking. Not quite all the way up. Not real. Not bad. And not the bar bar. So again, it was uh, good. It was, it, was, it was a good start. At least it showed character. So it was Reigns versus Finn for a while. Sammy got Sammy gets in, tries to tell tell Finn like, "Hey, if we get this one guy, we can just be you and leave." And eventually, Finn and Sammy Zayn's tagged up, started to beat Reigns all over the arena, got into the crowd. So it, again, it was good. Then Finn and Sammy started wrestling in the ring. Every time Finn would tease a finishing move or Sammy would tease a finishing room, Reigns just like showed up. Yeah, okay. So I, I was going to say, oh, well, Roman wins again. But thankfully it wasn't. And just booed. He just got sent out. Then there was the Ole champ. I think every, every so often they're like, this is boring. Or, or boring rains. They were chanting something. They just didn't seem to be in it. Yeah, you know, this, this show just seemed to be long. There was an ad in the middle of it, so it's at home. You're like, really? Again, the women's triple threat. I'm, I'm sure it was good. I'll give it a precursory sandwich. But I was cooking something. It's making dinner. I'm like, this is long. I think that was. I think it was on the shorter side. I don't think Triple Touch would be about a half hour long. But, hey, what do I know? That's why I'm a hobo, Tom. And then, all of a sudden, actually, I was shocked. I think they tossed Sami Zayn's out of the ring. Finn does hit the Coup de Gras on Roman Reigns. Finn won. I'm like, whoa. Wait, or did Finn beat Pin Zang? I think Finn actually pinned Sammy. Sammy can eat the pin. Roman Reigns didn't, though. Yeah, he, he's not even soon until SummerSlam. I doubt that. He's going to make Brock Lesnar do the job for him. Oh, well. That's what it was. Kind of lackluster. Raw to follow a really lackluster. Backlash. Uh, I know I'm busy tomorrow. A couple of programming notes. I'll probably post my SmackDown reactions. Probably th Wednesday? Thursday, I have to run around and do some stuff. Wednesday or Friday, whenever I can get to it. 
I just hope SmackDown is better than this because it was just like, yeah, having me take a take a nap during some of the matches. It wasn't that great. Oh, I would like to thank all of you guys for liking, sharing, subscribing, and viewing the videos. He puts a smile on my face. I go to the analytics and I can say, oh, six people actually watched my show. Yes. Also, if you feel free to leave a comment either in the YouTube comment section, or you can send an email to hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Then you will get your email right on line, and I'll try and see if I can post or at least send you a shout out, post a little special video for you or something. Give you a little incentive to, to say something. Again, have a good night, everyone. Bye.